Can you guys hear okay? Professor? Okay. Professor? Okay. Professor Bayer? Colin, is it okay? Colin? Yep. So we've been trying to get your attention for a few minutes because the recording isn't enabled on Zoom. Can you hear me? I think we're all muted. <laughs> you guys here? Check, check. Can you hear me? Save you from what? Can you hear me? Too loud? Uh, Somebody talk to me. We are. Hello. 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 Nothing. Hello. 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 You can't Hello? muted. Damn. Hello. We don't hear any of your. I don't sounds. think anyone's muted. Uh, I can hear all of us. Hello. Hello. <laughs> God. Uh oh. <laughs> um. Music technology. We love technology. <laughs> Colin, no. <laughs> Can't read that, Colin. I think Jerry's got us. Got us doing what? Okay. So, was the sound too loud? Was it too soft? No, no. We needed you to record the lecture. I think after the, I think you stopped recording during the break, and then after the break, it didn't continue recording. Correct. I paused it. But so we were just asking and... if you could start recording again. Yeah. I'll... So it seems to be recording. I'll go back and start from where I first came in here. But let me know if you hear. Yeah, I can hear that. You it's hear a that good. sound? Is it a good? I can hear you for sure. It's, it's, it's a little a, quiet. It's a little quiet. quiet. Never the issue. I'm asking you about the signal that you're hearing. Yeah, it's a little quiet, but it's coming through. Is that good? Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so what I was saying at the beginning is this is a modular synthesizer um, and the synth actually is made up of lots of different components, modules. Um, this particular module right here in the middle is a uh, mixer. It has an output one and output two. Um, that are here. You don't need to patch them. They're automatically um, wired from the back over to the patch bay and directly into the mixer from there. Um, there's an additional two outputs here, um, which are three and four, which show up in one of the stereo inputs onto the mixer, which are on channel 15 and 16. Excuse me. Um, so this is made up of a bunch of modules and um, we're going to actually put a frequency from the sign generator into input number one and turn up the volume for input number one. We can adjust the coarse frequency and or the fine frequency. And we can actually do something called frequency modulation by plugging a signal from somewhere else into the FM1 and now bringing up the FM1 knob 
And so oscillator number two is actually frequency modulating oscillator number one. How far it goes away from its original frequency is determined by this FM1 knob. And how fast it goes is determined by the course of this frequency oscillator that's modulating it. At this point, you start to hear something called sidebands. So here it's going up and down quickly. We slow it down. As you increase it, your brain is unable to follow at a very fast speed. So it actually makes those frequencies join together and create other frequencies. There you start to hear that other frequency. And now a second one, and a third one, and a fourth one. So it would be interesting if we actually took yet another oscillator like this one down below here. And we frequency modulated the one that's doing the frequency modulation. And if we did that with a square wave, it turns it on and off. So with only three oscillators, we're able to get a lot of different complex sounds. So you basically have a sequence now. If we change this one back to a sine wave, But a lot of different possibilities there. We could also add different sine waves. So now we have three different sine waves that are being added into each other.
The other thing is I could actually instead do a frequency modulation of the first one. And then take this and actually come into frequency modulation number two from this same guy over here. So always remember that the FM knob is going to actually change the distance that we deviate from the original frequency, whereas the course or fine of the secondary um, frequency is going to change the speed of how fast that modulation happens. Um, so what other kinds of things can we do over here? Um, well, we need to have some other approaches, not all um, creation is gonna wind up being just from those. What if we took this signal And let's make it just a, a simple signal again so we don't wind up getting confused as to what we're listening to. What if we took that signal and instead of going into the mixer, what if we took that and we went to a filter? So down below here, we have a couple of filters. Um, and over here, we have some filters. Um, so, I don't know which one I want to use. Um, all right, let's use this guy. All right, so this is a sort of standard basic filter. Uh, and now I'm going to take the output of that filter and go back where I was. And now I can change the cutoff frequency at the top here with the top knob. And I can choose what kind of filter with this switch. So this is a high pass filter. So So what I could do too here is I could actually make it so that I change that cutoff frequency with another frequency. So I have down here some low frequency oscillators. So here is a sine oscillator. And so I can make that happen on a regular basis can adjust the position that it works around. I could also make it a low pass filter. again modulated that signal
add some residents or take some away. And also I can do a frequency modulation of that with yet another um, low pass, I mean, um, excuse me, the VCO. So we'll go into the frequency modulation here and I'm coming out of So now I'm using a waveform over here. In order to modulate that filter. So do we know what what a, um, a resonance does? Anybody? On a filter? Nobody? It adds a boost at a specific frequency. At which frequency? At the cutoff frequency. At the cutoff frequency. So what the slope. So for instance, your frequency actually, um, and this is hard to do, but um, you've actually got a, um, a frequency that's here. And then the frequency doesn't go directly down. It actually slopes out, right? So if you add a little bump up here at that cutoff frequency, it kind of masks the fact that this slopes like that, and it gives you the impression that there's a sharp cutoff at the cutoff frequency. Um, so it allows you to, to deal that. Let me get rid of some of that. And let me get rid of this guy. Yeah, it's not quite so obvious here, but you hear where now that high end is a little bit peakier. And so you don't, you don't hear those extra frequencies up on the top. So I just added one more oscillator into the FM2 of that original sound that we're listening to. Um, 
Let's modulate the frequency that we have here. So lots of possibilities there, and we got a couple of minutes left, so let's stop all of the frequency modulation. And let's create some sort of, I mean, it's just a continuous sound. We don't just want continuous sound all the time, right? So let's see if we can't create some sort of an envelope for this. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to take the signal that we were sending out, and we're going to put that into um, a voltage-controlled amplifier. So there's in one on a voltage-controlled amplifier. Um, and then we're going to take the output of the voltage controlled amplifier and go back into there. Well, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Right? But if we actually take a another control voltage and go into the control voltage one, and we come out of an envelope generator, we would be able to actually control the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. But that's not working either. But the reason that's not working is because there's nothing that's telling that when to go. So if we put a signal into the gate, and then we come from a um, Let's do this um, from the triangle wave on this low frequency oscillator. Um, so the blend needs to be somewhere other than anywhere in the range. If it's on RM, then it's going to work based on whatever the rate is here that's triggering the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. Um, and actually, we should probably do this with just a, um, a raw signal. Yeah, let me do that. Um, so in here, Okay, so there we hear my our signal. Mm. 
So when it when the blend is somewhere other than on RM, you wind up hearing sound all the time. And the trigger, I'm not sure why it's not trigger is not working right now. Mm -hmm. In out trigger out to the CV in. Uh, So there on the gate, we're able to get a longer attack time with the decay. And if we hang on to the release time, the new attack time actually comes before the release. This is all stuff you'll experiment with and try out. Um, right, but we're running off the rate here. Um, one other thing you should know about the synth is that here you have a ladder. So if you need a signal to go more than one place, you can put the signal into the ladder and then take the signal out from another place or from yet another place. But if you actually break the signal here, by going into that jack, you're actually breaking the signal from going down, right? So it won't be able to do more than the three copies. But by doing that, you can then now start a different signal down here that you have three copies of, et cetera, et cetera, right? There are two of these ladders here. There's one there and there's another one down here. Um, one other thing you should be really careful of, and you can't see it because of the glare here, but it says do not use full out. This is the full out jack. Don't use that because it is so hot, um, you can cause some major problems with the synth um, and repairs are difficult to come by. Um, any questions? Okay, so remember I said there's two different mixers. Um, there's another small mix down here. So you have four ins, I'm sorry, five ins and one out. And so you can adjust them here. Um, there are a number of envelope generators. Um, there's LFOs. There's two more synths here, uh, two more oscillators, excuse me. Um, up here, you have one full oscillator, another one, 
another one, another one, and then one more here. So there's five full oscillators plus these two smaller oscillators don't have as many functions as the other one does. Um, there's a voltage controlled filter over here. There's a triple resonant filter here. Um, there is a lag processor. So it will actually delay signal by a certain period of time set by you. There's a signal to noise. Um, um, I'm sorry, a, um, a, a sample and hold unit. Um, there's an, um, a, another voltage control filter, uh, another QLFO, um, another VCA here and here, um, as well as the VCA up there, um, envelope generators here, a voltage control filter, a low pass filter, uh, another QLFO, um, and then up on the top, you actually have a dual AC router, which will allow you to route things to different places. So it can go one place and then go to another place at a sequenced period of time. Um, a, uh, another resonant filter. This is the wave warper, another voltage controlled amplifier and an envelope generator, um, another voltage control filter, a sub octave multiplexer. So the sub octave multiplexer actually adds a lower octave. Um, it'll actually add up to four lower octaves um, to whatever signal you're sending through it. And there's another sample and hold here as well as the, the one that's there. Um, there is on the bottom here, a, um, a converter that actually goes MIDI to CV. So you can actually come in with a MIDI signal, convert it over to a control voltage, and then use that control voltage in order to deal things. So for instance, um, you could conceivably take the, um, the keyboard and have that come in here, take the control voltage one out of that and have that affect one of the oscillators by going into the one volt per octave. Um, and then also um, control the gate from the keyboard. Um, so instead of having this gate come from the os, the, the, from here, which is from the low frequency oscillator, if I do a gate from here, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, the the uh, MIDI to CV isn't set up right. I'd have to go in and, and do a bunch of manipulation. But basically, if you did that, then you could actually control from the keyboard when the gate happens and control the uh, frequency with the CV1 out. And there's also one for velocity, and there's also an auxiliary, but it needs to be set up. The manuals for everything are online in the computer, um, in the manuals folder, which is in the dock, right down at the bottom. Any questions? Um, yeah, what what is the MIDI value specifically control about the CV? What is the MIDI value? There is no MIDI value. You're coming from MIDI. It's not, this isn't controlling a MIDI value. Right. It, which note am I hitting? And that actually comes out of here. And that then controls the, uh, comes out of the bottom guy, the CV. And then you would use that in order to patch into the one volt per octave on an oscillator. Oh, okay. So it's just like whichever MIDI octave it's in controls a different, like it is another volt kind of. What it is, is it relates the note on the keyboard to a particular frequency in the oscillator based on it being plugged into the one volt slash octave. Okay, got it. Right. So it's up here, it's into the one volt per octave um, and that would then control this knob. 
sorry, this top knob. So you could set this at a particular spot, tune it, and then your keys would actually be the correct pitches. Any other questions? Uh, could you theoretically like hard patch or normal a signal flow on one of these and then not have any patch points and have it go straight through? Go straight to where? Like, could you have a normal setting? Like if I owned one, which I probably never will, could I have it so it goes from an oscillator to a filter to the amp to the out without any patching or is it all always hard patching? If you don't got these, you're not gonna ever hear anything. It, there is no predetermined patching that happens in the back. The only thing that happens in the back is the outputs one and two and the outputs three and four go directly over to the patch bay. That's the only thing that's connected in the back um, that makes anything happen that's not obvious or visible from the front. All right. No more questions? Okay, I'll be in touch with you about what happens in terms of the studio um, or PARI chat will be. Um, so most likely you'll get something from her saying, here's the process, here's what you do, here's when it's open, here's when it's available. Um, I will uh, follow up with her tomorrow to find out what the story is. Okay, so you're um, going to, yeah. Sorry, so uh, if we're not in New York, what, how are we doing the first assignment? Uh, I will actually put something together for you so that you'll know what to do in, in lieu of the first assignment of recording. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank Have a good you. week. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.